Right. How many know there's a space between you and it? Now, of course, he's talking about the space between you and it is the ark. Yes. But it's a parallel thought. The, the word, it says, you got you and it. So whatever your it is, there's a space between you and whatever it is. And I believe it's, it's the promise. It's not just the ark. It's the promise. That's, that's what I did on the first teaching I'm talking about seven years ago. I, I, I dissected, it's been like three and a half teaching, three and a half times, talking about the space between you and it. Because most of us don't know what that space is about. And we can't get there. That space is over important for us. We can't go after the ark and what it represents. The ark represents something. It's on the, the priest got to bury it, bury it, carry it, right? It's on their shoulders. Okay. So you got to understand. They say they should remove from your place and go after it. Yet they, there should be a space between you and it and 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. He tell you. There's a space between you and it. Mm -hmm. And then he says, a measurement, which is 2,000 cubits. Mm -hmm. But hey, don't come near it. Mm -hmm. That you may know the way by which you must go. Yes, For you have not passed this way heretofore. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend more of my time in this verse. And, Jesus, and Joshua, Yeshua, said unto the people, sanctify yourselves. And God never asks you to do something without giving you the reason for it. Amen. I don't know if y'all know that. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll touch that too. <laughs> for tomorrow, the Lord will do what? Wonders, Wonders among you. And Joshua spoke unto the priest, saying, take up the Ark of the Covenant. Right? And pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Man, this is good stuff. This is Apostolic Kingdom 202, not 101. This is powerful, powerful, powerful prophetic principle. And if you got to understand, y'all, because change is imminent. God wants us to do some things. And I believe that when I read the Bible, I, I, I read it in principle. I don't read it in, yeah, I read it historically. I read it uh, as a manual and things of that sort. But to me, I can get life lessons from it. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I observe is how Joshua first had to stop at, before they could go and cross over Jordan, they had to stop at Shittim. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you, you got to understand that it was the Valley of Shittim it's a valley. It's just another word for it's occasion. You, you might have acacia wood. Yeah, acacia tree in your Bible. It's another version, same thing. Uh, uh, and it's about, you know, as a prophetic picture to us, it lets me know, because I mean, know Joshua is a type of shadow of Jesus. I mean, know Jesus is Joshua. You know, you can read in scriptures, you know, it's the same word. In Hebrew, Jesus and Joshua are the same word, Yeshua. Yeah. That's why people try to say, well, we shouldn't be using Jesus as a name. I say, well, it's Yeshua. Come on, man. Cut me some slack. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Joshua, same people. Mm -hmm. You know, historically, it's Joshua with just a type of shadow. Whatever you see with done in Joshua's life was a type of shadow of what Jesus did mm -hmm. and what Jesus is doing, right? Mm -hmm. So if they can't, I'm not going to talk about the three days and all that, but I like it because they stopped in the Valley of Shittim. You got to understand if you did any. Research, you'll find out the work. The, not only, we're not going to talk about the trees, but the Valley of Shittim was in Moab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So before they can even get the ark on the back of the priests, or get a defined line of how they need to approach God, they had to come to a valley called Shittim. Alright? That's a prophetic principle. I didn't mention this in the first teaching that I did. But the Valley of Shittim, if it's in Moab, because that's you can find up in the chapter before that, that they were in Moab. And you, you gotta understand what Moab is. Y'all yeah. know y'all know what Moab is? Moab and Ammon was 
the, the part of Lot's uh, deception from his daughter. So they conceived those two tribes. Those are the two tribes who were the thorn in their flesh. See, when you read the Bible, it's dysfunctional family. <laughs> Every, everything. All of the Ites family. <laughs> everything. Right? So you ain't the first people that had dysfunction in your family. Right. Even what's going on now between uh, Palestinians and Israel. Yep. They come from the same. <laughs> yeah. Right. Ishmael and Isaac. Yep. Got the same daddy. Yeah. It makes sense when you start looking at it from a different angle instead of letting the media tell you one thing. Right, right. Amen. Hmm. That's good. <laughs> I can go a lot of different ways without leaving that alone. Because we're all related. Mm -hmm. That family tree, I don't care what color your skin is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of us. Black, oh, white, yeah. yellow, Asian, all of us. Yes. No matter who you are. Right. Amen. It's only one race. Yeah. People rub me wrong and say, well, you know, that race over there, there ain't, ain't no race over there. It's one. Right. They got a different earth suit. Right. They got a different right. color. That's, that's all. That's they were dipped in a different, <laughs> amen, different color. That's all. They were just dipped. Their blood light was dipped in the darker skin or yeah. dipped in the lighter skin. You know what I mean? We all got. Yes, sir. Yeah, the human race is the race. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. We all get guilty of doing, you know, saying little subtle stuff. Yeah, yeah. We got to get our tongues baptized, don't we? Yes, sir. Again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. But the valley of Shittim is all, every one of us, if we're going to go to the promised land, you got to come to the valley of Shittim. Right. It's, I mean, it's a wonderful place. It's Jordan. It's wonderful. But if we're going to understand what it means to be in the moment now, we got to understand what does that mean as a prophetic word. What is the prophetic significance of Shittim? Well, here it is. <laughs> it's the place of scourging and thorns. It's a dry, yeah, dry place. Yeah, that's, yep, you got me. You, you were ahead of me, baby. But yep, it's going to be dry soil. It's a place where the dry, where, you know, the tree grew up in dry places, like Prophet just said. But the etymology of it is the place of scourging thorns. It's the thorny place. And let me help you out. When you, could I help you out on how to, Better study your Bible. Mm -hmm. Because when we think of stormy places, right? Anybody remember the parables? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many know what it was four different types of soil? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. The first one was thorny. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Stony. We got we got them stuff. We got we, matter of fact, we got all these four in the church. And then you got the wayside. You got people that are way. I need to do a preaching on that. The wayside folks. Because right. <laughs> some folks got wayside. They 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 ground their soil is way out of pocket. Then you got the good ground folks. Good and honest heart. They bring forth everything that's sown. Yes, Lord. But the authority, he even told us. Jesus didn't give us no room to mess that up. You know what he told us? Let's go to Mark. <laughs> All of us got to come through this way. It's the gate you got to come through. Shit up is where you got to come through. I, I, heard a, <laughs> say, I heard a friend say, use the word, took off the, the T-I-M on it. <laughs> he, said, he said, everybody got to go through it. <laughs> I'm like, hey, dude. He actually said it. I'm like, okay, that's just a little bit too bright. Just a little bit too bold. Give a couple of folks license. Hey, Amen. I mean, you know that we don't need no license. No, not at all. So, it says, uh, yeah, there you go. I'm, I'm, let's go to Matthew 13. I think that's a little bit better. No, no stay there. We'll go to 18. Yeah, Mark, <laughs> stay there. Mark 4 and 18. Let's look at the thorns. It says, and these are they which are sown among what? Thorns. Mm -hmm. Such as hear the word. Mm -hmm. And the what? Cares of this world. Mm -hmm. Deceitfulness of riches. Mm -hmm. The lust of other things. 
Enter in and choke the word and it becomes what? Unfruitful. Talk about the word of the kingdom. Ain't talking about your atypical salvation word. Talking about the word of the kingdom. Just talking about the parable of the kingdom. So it's talking about the word of the kingdom. If it's sown in the right atmosphere, it becomes fruitful. But if it's sown among thorns, and the reason why it doesn't get fruit, become fruitful among thorns is because of the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. I'm here to tell you, that is what I use. This is my prophetic picture to tell you. If it's the place of scourging thorns, that's what Shittim is. Normally it's the people that are bound by the cares of this world, the lust of other things, and the deceitfulness of riches. That's why he got to bring us to that valley to strip us. From the cares of this world. From the lust of other things. From the deceitfulness of riches. It's the place of your scourging. If you know anything, scourging is the place of your discipline. God will use certain things that's in your life to be a thorn to you. To discipline you. You know, I, I know, I get it. You know, we, we don't all, nobody, I, I'm, if you like me, I like peace. <laughs> I like calmness. I'm, I'm a man of serenity, you know, unless I have to be otherwise. But I just like peace and quiet. But I'm here to tell you that there are times God will bring you into a season where the thorns that's in your life need to be removed. I'm here to tell you there is a remedy for the thorns that's in your life. You don't have to be bound by the cares of this world, lust of other things, or deceitfulness of riches. Why? Because Jesus took the thorns for you. How do you know? He had a crown of thorns on his head. Why did he need a crown of thorns? Blood dripped down the... That was one of the seven places where he shed his blood was in our thinking. So if I change the way I think, the cares of this world, the lust of other things, and the deceitfulness of riches are removed from my life. You keep sitting up there fighting the devil if you want to. The best fight you need to do is a good fight. The good fight of faith. Bringing your body under and being submitted to the word and submitted to God's way.